Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. For those who are new, my name is Helena Pergamon. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to create this decorative uh, cable ripping. I call it more decorative than functional because it doesn't pull uh, the fabric together. It has more loose designs than standard ribbing and knitwear. In this project, I, I used uh, iron weight yarn and needles uh, size of 5 mm. I'm going to use the long tail cast on, which also can be referred to us as a double cast on. It is classic, fast and easy method to place the first stitches on the needle. It also known for its uh, stretchiness. The long tail cast on is work onto one needle that is placed in your uh, dominant hand and the yarn is used uh, from the tail and the ball itself and uh, your non-dominant hand helps to form the first stitches that you will need from. You can use the long tail cast on, on uh, uh, for almost any knitting projects. Now we have to pull the correct length of the tail. It also can be tricky to know how much yarn you need. Some calculation can be done by using the number of stitches by multiplying the length per stitch. The length per stitch uh, will depend on the yarn thickness. The alternative rule is for this cast on to use three times the width uh, of uh, the project you are casting on for, plus approximately 10-20 cm extra for uh, weaving the end. It is always better to have uh, more yarn than not enough. Additionally, if you have two joint pieces together, you can uh, use the uh, uh, tail to join pieces together afterwards. During casting on, make sure the stitches are not too tight and give a space between each stitch. Make sure your stitches can move smoothly and easily on the needle and create space between each stitch for about a yarn width of uh, space plus minus between each uh, casting on stitch. Doing that uh, gives your fabric some elasticity. If your first stitches are too tight, they will pull the fabric together at the beginning of your project and it will not be the desired look you want to achieve. You can start uh, to cast on with the slip knot or without the slip knot. First, I will show you how to start uh, with the slip knot and after that without it. Once again, create a slip knot and place it on the needle. The ball end of yarn should be away from you and the tail end closer to you. The long tail over your index finger and the short tail over your thumb. Once again, but this time without slip knot, holding the needle in your dominant hand and using your non-dominant hand, placing the yarn over your index finger and thumb and grasp uh, the two tails uh, hanging from the fingers. Slide the needle under the yarn, bring the needle tip slightly towards you, then insert it into the thumb loop from below. Grab the strand from uh, your index finger with a needle and pull it uh, through the loop on your thumb and release the yarn from your thumb. Use your thumb and tighten up the stitch and return your hand to the initial position. I will show you in a slow mode once again. Insert the needle into the thumb loop uh, from below. Next, grab the strand uh, from the index finger with a needle and pull it uh, through the loop on your uh, thumb and release the yarn from the thumb. Use uh, your thumb to tighten up the stitch and return your hand uh, to the initial position. Cast on the required number of stitches for the project and the good practice is to avoid pulling the yarn too tight when casting on. Make sure your stitches can move smoothly and easily on the needle. If your first row of stitches is too tight, use a larger needle for casting on to create a looser stitch that are easier to knit into the next row. You can also use uh, both of your needles uh, held together to cast on by using the same method. I've completed the uh, casting on. As I've mentioned earlier, if you have a long tail of uh, yarn and you need uh, to seam the project, don't cut the yarn, use it for seaming. 
The next important part is the tension of the yarn. It is a good practice to achieve an even yarn tension during knitting, uh, which also plays an important factor to creating uh, even stitches. And uh, you have to involve your non-dominant hand to create uh, the yarn tension. I'm going to show you once again in a slow mood. Hold the needle with uh, the stitches on in your uh, dominant hand and with uh, your non-dominant hand create uh, the yarn tension. Take the long tail that is connected to the ball and place it between your little finger and the ring finger. Next, wrap the yarn around little finger, pull gently across the inside of uh, the ring finger and middle finger and then on top of your index finger. Place the needle with the stitches between your index finger and the thumb and gently pull the tail end. Uh, we have created the uh, tension and are ready to start knitting our first row. Before we begin, this pattern consists of two basic stitches, knit and purl stitches. By looking at this uh, knit example, you can see that the V shaped stitches are knit stitches, they create a face fabric and purl stitches are the reverse of knit stitches, create wavy texture, which also can be referred to as the back side of the fabric. Back to knitting, uh, hold the needle with the stitches uh, on in your non-dominant hand and the working needle will be in your dominant hand. First we will knit uh, 3 stitches and after that purl 3. The knit stitch start with the yarn at the back of the needle. Insert the working needle from front to back into first stitch. Keep the working needle under. Grab the yarn with the working needle and pull the strand through the stitch. Slip the cast on stitch off the needle and repeat this step with the next two stitches. We have completed the three knit stitches, so you can see that we uh, have formed some V's. The purl stitch starts with the yarn held in the front. This time we are going to insert the needle from the back uh, to front into a stitch, grab the yarn with the working needle and pull through the loop from backwards, uh, front to back and slide the stitch off. Once again insert the needle from the back to front into a stitch, uh, grab the yarn, pull through the loop uh, from backwards and slide the stitch off. Here you can see we form some uh, bumps, it's three pearl stitches. Next we have to knit three stitches. Now knit three. One, two, three, and pearl three. One, two, and three. And knit three. One, two, and three. We have completed uh, our first row. Even though one row does not look much, we can uh, clearly see the V shaped stitches uh, created by knit stitches and bumps created by pearl stitches. Next, swap the needles between your hands. Uh, the second row starts with the purl stitches. Uh, hold the yarn at the front. If you have different amount of stitches and your first row finished uh, with the purl stitches, then uh, hold yarn at the back and work on knit stitches instead. Purl 3, 1, 2, and 3. Now knit 3. One, two, and three. Now purl three. One, two, and three. And knit three. One, 
two and three continue to the end turn your work and repeat the pattern three by three purl three and knit three or knit three and purl three every fourth uh, row we are going to create uh, cables by crossing the stitches at the front of the knitted stitches and it will be the face of the fabric if you look at the drawing and the diagram, you can see that the crossing stitches uh, changes their direction from the middle. This is to achieve uh, symmetry in the design. If you use uh, this pattern to knit a scarf or where the symmetry is not important, you can cross the stitches only to the left or right. If you choose uh, one direction, the easiest and faster is uh, to cross the stitch uh, uh, to the left. You will have more understanding after the next part of the tutorial. To create cables, we will need a cable tools such as cable needles or cable safety pins. Uh, this cable is uh, simple and uh, we can use a small needle or even a stitch marker uh, to complete uh, this uh, cable. To create the cable, we will uh, have to cross uh, stitch over knitted stitches. This is a uh, 1 over 2 right cross and 1 over 2 left cross. In the pattern instruction, uh, sometimes it will be written 1 over 2 right cross or 1 over 2 left cross or I have included an abbreviation at the top CR3B or CR3F. I take large example for this part. If you have a cable on the edge, uh, this will uh, work for the design without uh, seaming. If you have uh, seams in the design, always have pearl stitches on the edges. Take a cable needle or a stitch marker. The cable needle would be the best, but if you don't have one, use a stitch marker. Slip the next two stitches onto a stitch marker or cable needle. Move uh, to the back. Make sure the yarn is at the back, not at the front. Uh, knit one. Place two stitches back on the knitting needle and knit two. When you place uh, stitches back onto the needle, make sure to not twist them. If stitches were twisted, it will be very difficult to knit them. You can see my needle is not getting into a stitch. This is another sign that the stitches are twisted. Turn your work and reposition the stitches. After repositioning the stitches, it will be easier to insert the needle into a stitch. Now need two and purl three. One, two, and three. Once again, uh, take the cable needle, slip the next two stitches onto a cable needle and move to the back. This time I'm using different type of cable needle. Many crafters can knit from the cable needle. For me personally, if uh, more than one stitch on the needle, if I knit it uh, back from it, uh, my stitches are tighter than the rest of my stitches. Therefore, I slide them back onto my standard knitting needle. You can experiment and uh, find your own preferred method. Now I place my two stitches uh, back onto a needle. Knit two. And purl three. Uh, next, I'm going to show you how to change direction of the cable. This will be easier because we have to move one stitch only. Take the cable needle, slide the stitch onto the needle and move to the front. And knit two. Place the stitch back onto the needle and knit one. Pearl three 
and once again take a cable needle slide the stitch onto the needle and move to the front need two and need one purl three and repeat the pattern I will speed up the process uh, to the next step. Next, uh, you have to purl three and knit the uh, three and repeat the pattern to the end of the round by purl three and knit three. After that, uh, knit two rows more and uh, on the fourth row, form the cables again. Continue with the sample. Uh, you can also experiment if you would like to create uh, twists every fourth, uh, sixth, or eighth uh, row. The possibilities are endless for the combination. In some designs, the larger space between crosses is more appropriate. And last but not least, if you uh, want the ribbing to be uh, not too tight, you will have to add additional stitches to the design. Approximately one stitch for every three stitches plus minus. It will depend uh, on the rib itself. For example, if you have a ribbing two times two, uh, add an additional stitch every second stitch. If you look closely in this design, I added one stitch almost every three stitches and three Three stitches are transferred into two stitches afterwards, just before the plain knitting. I hope you've had great experience. Thank you for watching. For those who are new to my channel, if you like to see more videos in the future, please subscribe to be notified when I add a new video. Enjoy your day or evening, and I will see you soon.